right, here's the NOX sensor, NOX sensor. And it's got this little guy here with it. And the bank one sensor one is what it kept referring to. So here is the one guy right here. Got this bolt and another bolt right here. And if you follow that wire over, you can see him right there behind the dipstick. So what I'm gonna do, this is a socket. It's just a, I guess just a regular oxygen sensor socket. Um, I walked in with the sensor to part store to make sure I had the right one. I've got a few of these, but I wanna make sure I have one that would fit before I drove all the way home and pick this one up. I just put it right on right like that. Right around like this. Add a little short piece of cheater pot. Put on there. And I'm not going to get it real aggressive with it. But. Because I'm kind of worried about that thing getting hot like it does. And there it goes. I mean, I had to put a little force behind it, but it wasn't. A massive amount of force so what I'm gonna do now I've got it broke loose I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew that one and find the sockets over here to take this off disconnect the batteries and um, go ahead and get started putting the new one in I wasn't really sure how big of a beast that was going to be to un to get undone and that's why I didn't take the batteries loose first so. There's one. Push this guy back out of the way. Here's the other. Doesn't take much. Just slip this guy off and put him where he can get back to the terminal. millimeter and it was that one may be a little more fun to get on something different going. The little plug here was kind of aggravating. You pull that little red tab back. Once I pulled a little red tab back, I took a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver, and got in there and just barely did turn it sideways to open it up and pushed against the corner at the same time and it come right undone. But you know they can be really aggravating. So here this is what I got now. So now I'm gonna finish unscrewing that part and I'll be ready to put my new one in. I got it screwed in. Got the wire put back in these little looms right here and right here. Got my two bolts back on and plugged it in and pushed a little blocking tab in. Now we're gonna turn the ignition on and see what happens. Was no check light on when I started it. It would come and go and come and go. Let's fire it up, see what comes on that. No check engine light. that so doesn't look like it's causing an issue right now I was told by the dealer that it did not have to be programmed 
to the truck. So we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully that's going to be okay. But I won't know for sure until I put it under another load. But either way, that one could stand to be cleaned up. I will run it a little bit and let you guys know if I cleared up my coats or not. Cleared up my problem. These are the coats that I was getting from the truck, the P11DB and the P249D. The P249D is the most consistent code that came up, which referred to the knot sensor. Um, I did consult a few different mechanics and the dealer before I purchased the knot sensor and installed it, and they all kind of felt the same way, that that would probably be the cure for the problem. This is the schematic that they had given me when I purchased the knot sensor for the location. If that helps anyone, I figured I'd post that up there also. Um, it's been about two days and about 600 miles. No more check engine lights so far. Here's the part number for the position one NOX Knox sensor uh, that I just replaced. 12680215. I do feel pretty good about it fixing my issue. Like I say, I've had, I put over 600 miles on it in two days and so far no lights. Um, everything's been good and it would have normally came on before. I do hope this video help someone out um i looked all over for videos about changing that particular sensor on this particular truck and i didn't find anything so um hopefully it helps someone out and thank you guys for watching